My name is Elizabeth Kerr. I have been a neuropsychologist with the Comprehensive Epilepsy Program at SickKids for the last 25 years, and I'm the Program Director of the Epilepsy Classroom. This presentation is about promoting school success for children living with epilepsy. The learning objectives are to identify why school support is critical for children living with epilepsy, to identify educational resources about epilepsy that you can share with parents, educators, and others, and to recognize the types of support provided to children at school. The Ontario Ministry of Education legislated that all Ontario school boards and authorities maintain policies to support students with prevalent medical conditions. Epilepsy is one of four conditions covered by policy PPM 161, which sets the requirements for providing effective support to students. The policy is designed to foster a healthy and inclusive learning environment. For children living with epilepsy, the policy primarily addresses physical safety and rescue medications. For seizure management, school staff are referred to the child's individual plan of care, which is filled out by physicians. We know that seizure management is the tip of the iceberg in terms of student inclusion, well-being and success. Epilepsy is more than the physical experience of having seizures. In fact, approximately 80% of children living with epilepsy experience some of the cognitive, psychological and social consequences of the condition, each of which is extremely relevant to success at school. Unfortunately, most educators do not receive formal training about epilepsy. Numerous studies show that teachers have pervasive negative attitudes about epilepsy. They worry about physical safety and administering rescue medications. And they lack knowledge that not all seizures are alike and that epilepsy is not just a seizure event. Negative attitudes, fear of seizures, and lack of knowledge have the potential to negatively impact the school success of a child living with epilepsy and to influence the attitudes of the child's peers. Because the comorbidities of epilepsy play a major role in day-to-day -day school performance, as well as in determining the educational and occupational outcomes of children living with epilepsy, the knowledge gap needs to be addressed. A child's school well-being requires a partnership among those involved in his or her care. Research shows that most teachers would prefer that epilepsy information and resources come directly from the child's medical team. As such, healthcare providers are in a unique position to be strong advocates for their patients and to educate others. In addition to completing the plan of care form, a personalized letter from a physician or nurse about the needs of a particular child should be given to parents to share with schools. If relevant to the individual child, the letter can outline any concerns about development, such as motor or speech issues, diagnosis of ADHD, irritability, and so forth. The letter can advocate for allied health services, and the letter should include resources to enhance the recipient's knowledge about epilepsy. In considering resources to share, Epilepsy Ontario has a webpage dedicated to educators. It includes three 15-minute online modules. It also has links to videos showing several seizure types and a link to the Epilepsy and School Success Toolkit. The Epilepsy and School Success Toolkit was developed in Ontario by a team of epilepsy clinicians and researchers with input from 10 educators. The free kit is available in both French and English and includes a 10 minute video that outlines seizure characteristics, seizure first aid, and the cognitive, psychological, and social consequences of epilepsy. Four booklets provide some of the information contained in the video, along with specific classroom strategies, and a 14-minute video outlines how to administer rescue medications. A recent study demonstrated that the 10-minute video significantly increased teachers' knowledge in terms of epilepsy, seizure safety, and the consequences of epilepsy. The booklets have been enthusiastically received by parents, teachers, and the Canadian Psychological Association. The resources just discussed are used in tandem with local epilepsy agencies who, when working with schools, not only provide authoritative materials about epilepsy, but also provide in-person teacher education sessions, in-classroom presentations for students, they may attend school team meetings to plan for a child, and they engage in situational advocacy. There are 17 local agencies throughout Ontario, which can be located through the Canadian Epilepsy Alliance and the Epilepsy Ontario websites. Equipping parents, teachers, and colleagues with epilepsy educational resources 
has the potential to reduce the burden of epilepsy on the child, parent, and school community. In terms of school support, schools are mandated to offer the least restrictive environment. First, a child's medical, learning, and social emotional needs may be captured through accommodations and or modifications that are incorporated into an individual education plan or IEP. With documentation, such as a letter from a doctor or nurse outlining the child's needs, resource support and allied health support may be given. In-class EA support may be provided based on a child's physical needs, such as ongoing seizures. The final tier is consideration of formal identification of an exceptionality. This is done through the Identification Placement Review Committee. Exceptional is defined as a pupil whose behavioral, communicational, intellectual, physical, or multiple needs are such that he or she requires placement in a special education program as deemed by the committee. Children with epilepsy may be identified based on comorbidities that align with one or more of the designated categories. One additional resource for those in the GTA is the Epilepsy Classroom. It's a year-long program located at SickKids, and the classroom provides both assessment of and support for the learning and social-emotional needs of elementary students. Referral can be made by a medical team, epilepsy agencies, parents, or schools. For children living with epilepsy, school education and learning represent the primary interactive biopsychosocial components associated with their health outcomes. Advocacy by healthcare providers is essential for promoting school well-being and success for children living with epilepsy. An educational grant for Project ECHO was received from the Ministry of Health and Long-Term Care.